CD coming soon, yeah! Before earning her first big crossover hit with Big Energy and seeing over a hundred of her unreleased tracks leak onto the internet, the rapper Lotto was born Alyssa Michelle Stevens on December 22nd, 1998 in Columbus, Ohio to a biracial couple, Misty Pitts and Shane Stevens. At the age of just two, her parents moved the family from Ohio to Atlanta, Georgia, where Alyssa grew up on the south side of Clayton County and bonded with her father over their shared interest in drag racing. As a kid, Alyssa was always drumming up ingenious ways of trying to earn a little extra scratch. She not only sold candy in the halls of her elementary school, but when she got a little bit older, she claims that she would sometimes make around $10,000 a night by throwing house parties and charging an entry fee at the door, while also marking up snacks like chips and soda on the inside. Sounds like Lotto was a hustler from day one. During these parties, Alyssa would play the music from some of her favorite artists, not only rappers that her father introduced her to, like Tupac and Bone Thugs and Harmony, as well as the NWA, but her own favorites like Nicki Minaj and Gucci Mane as well. When she wasn't flexing her entrepreneurial skill set, Alyssa enjoyed her time in school, where English was her favorite subject. Anything that had to do with writing, including poetry, metaphors, similes, or any type of wordplay, she loved it all. Do you remember any of your yeah, first photos? Like, what? Chat. Are we talking Skyline Chili? You know I, would, I would just be talking about my little life at the time or whatever. Like, I'd be talking about these girls hanging on me in school, but I'm too cool. <laughs> While Alyssa was growing up, her dad was very much a street dude with a whole bunch of rapper friends. And since Alyssa was such a daddy's girl, she was often hanging out with him and a collection of unique personalities. Getting a chance to witness firsthand this type of fast living lifestyle and being around so many different rappers would inevitably combine with her love for writing to ensure that both worlds would crash together. So inspired by her father and the music she loved, Alyssa started writing lyrics at the age of eight in a studio that she'd often visit while spending time with her pops. That's when she'd grab a pen and just start scratching lyrics out on a piece of paper. By the time that she was in fifth grade, she was already freestyling against high schoolers and college students. Then, as she grew older, she started performing at talent shows. After earning a healthy dose of experience, Alyssa approached her father and asked him to manage her. It took some convincing, but during her career at Lovejoy High School, he eventually came around to the idea. And shortly thereafter, Alyssa earned the biggest opportunity of her young life. Knowing full well that her dream was to become a rapper, Alyssa donned the name of Miss Mulatto as a nod to her parents' biracial heritage and created one of her very first big success stories with a jingle video that played every morning in schools all throughout Clayton County, the suburb in which she was raised. With the support of her father, she'd also drive all around the city of Atlanta in a van with a picture of her face wrapped around it, handing out physical copies of her debut mixtape, Miss Mulatto, and plastering posters of herself on buildings. I mean, it was guerrilla marketing at its finest. And guess what? It worked. Lotto told the Los Angeles Times about this stage of her life. I didn't sit in the studio, make a song, and post it on social media to have it go viral. No shade to whoever has, but I came up at the tail end of a different musical generation. We really got this shit out of the mud. I didn't have a plan B. After making the rounds all over Atlanta, Alyssa had earned herself enough of a local reputation to get noticed by producers looking to put together a new reality series called The Rap Game. Man, I'm 16 now. I ain't playing no more games with y'all kids. No candy land, no more holding hands, anybody can get it, real spit. When this opportunity came knocking, Alyssa put her education on hold to take part in the series at only 16 years old and found herself in the middle of a boot camp that pitted a whole bunch of aspiring young rappers against one another over an eight week span. By the end of the series, Alyssa as Miss Mulatto was the last rapper standing. Her prize was a recording contract with producer of the series, Jermaine Dupree and his so-so deaf recordings. But in a shocking turn of events, Alyssa would turn down the contract, claiming that they weren't offering to pay her enough. Oh yeah, being around JD, you, you quickly learn. Like, JD's work ethic is crazy. Like, they don't sleep at all. They take little power naps, that's about it. For the next few years, Alyssa remained an independent artist and also opened up her very own clothing store at 17 years old. Located on the south side of Atlanta, Alyssa's shop was called Pit Stop Boutique as a callback to her former love for drag racing, with the store mainly specializing in online orders and clothing and apparel, telling them people don't be knowing about that. It was super lit. It was really ghetto. It was very ghetto. But I was a baby, 17, running a whole store, and I was making bang. But soon enough, Alyssa's music career began pulling in the kind of money that she always dreamt of making. In early 2016, she released her first single, 
track produced by Jermaine Dupri titled No More Talking. And that same year, she'd win the Youth Hip Hop R&B Award at the Georgia Music Awards. A year later, her music would be all the bolder and more self-assured. That's when she released her second mixtape, Lotto Let Em Know before closing out 2017 with an EP titled Time and Pressure. In 2018, Alyssa dropped The Miss from Miss Mulatto and officially just started going by Mulatto. In 2019, she dropped two new EPs in the span of just one year that addressed her new experiences and growth from being a teenager to a woman. Big Lotto and Hit the Lotto would each feature versions of the hit track from the South and earn her a recording contract with RCA in March of 2020. Now that she was a bigger deal than ever before, Lotto got the chance to team up with one of her idols, and Gucci Man for Muwap. She'd also get the chance to work with the likes of Doja Cat, Lil Baby, and City Girls, many of whom would appear on her debut album, Queen of the South. But with as much success she was still experiencing, there was still one little problem her stage name. For a while, Alyssa tended more or less to just brush that scrutiny off that came her way. But by 2021, she realized that she couldn't do that any longer. In May of that year, Alyssa confirmed in various interviews that she would officially be known as just Lotto. In coordination with this name change, Lotto would drop her single, The Biggest, which she told High Snobiety addressed a controversy and quote, came from a humble and apologetic headspace to where it's like, okay, I finally matured enough to where I was able to listen to what everybody was saying about the name. The Biggest also heralded the release of Lotto's next album, 2022's 777, which further boasted the single Big Energy, the track that would become Lotto's first ever crossover hit. Featuring a sample of Tom Tom Club's 1981 single Genius of Love, a track that was also famously sampled by Mariah Carey on her 1995 hit Fantasy, Big Energy would climb all the way to the number 3 spot on the Billboard's Hot 100 chart to lead to Lotto taking home the trophy for Best New Artist at the BET Awards. During that ceremony, Lotto even got the chance to perform a remix of her hit right next to Mariah Carey. Shortly thereafter, she found herself nominated for multiple MTV VMA Awards and two Grammys, the latter of which painted something of a target on her back after it upset one of her idols in Nicki Minaj. Following Lotto's Grammy nods in the category of rap music, Nicki Minaj took to social media upset that her own number one single, Super Freaky Girl, was relegated to the pop category instead. It was Nicki's opinion that since both tracks utilize samples of pop music, then Big Energy should also be removed from the rap categories. This is when Lotto tried to reach out to Nicki through private conversation, which Nicki then leaked online while referring to Lotto as a Karen and a scratch off. That's when things escalated and Lotto called Nicki a 40 year old bully while adding that she'd been ignoring subliminal disses from Nicki for a while now. Things would only get pettier from there, with Nicki bringing up Lotto's record sales, while also claiming that she declined appearing the feature on two of Lotto's songs. In the middle of all of this, over 100 unreleased tracks of Lotto's were leaked online by unknown parties. Was it done by Nicki's bidding? I mean, no one seems to know for sure, but the timing sure is suspicious. Either way, Lotto bounced back soon enough with her newest single, Pussy, a track that came out in the midst of the Roe vs Wade overturn. The single was quickly heralded for its timeliness and became a massive hit. And now that Lotto has accomplished one of her lifelong goals of winning a BET award, she's setting her eyes on multiplying that win into an entire room full of trophies. But as for where Lotto's career takes her from here, well, you already know what I'm about to say, we're just gonna have to wait and see. I mean, after all, this has been before they were famous. So thank you everybody for watching today's episode. And before you head out, consider answering the following question. If one of your former idols suddenly called you out on social media, would you fight back or keep quiet and let things blow over? Let me know what you would have done in Lotto's position in the comment section down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure that you never miss a new episode, all that good stuff. And if you'd like to check out a few other celebrity come ups before you leave, then be sure to check out our looks into the stories of Steve Lacey, Lola Brooke, and Bandman Rill. My name is Clyde Smith, and I'll see you guys in another video.